Welcome to the You Can Do It Too podcast. Here we talk about how to tackle tasks, finish projects, and fulfill your dreams one step at a time. Regardless of your situation, you can make it happen. It's about the power of momentum and how real people are living their dreams right now. I'm Michelle Forsyth. Now let's get started. All right, we're here with Coach Rosa. Very excited about this particular interview today. Coach Rosa Smith Montanero is the best selling author of Mind Over Platter Train Your Brain to Think Thin. Such a great title. She is a certified success coach with certifications at the master level in clinical hypnosis, neuro linguistics programming, NLP. Humanistic Neuro Linguistics Psychology. I have to read this because there's lots of big words in this one. <laughs> Timeline Therapy, Emotional Freedom Techniques, EFT, as well as other modalities. Coach Rosa combines her expertise in the power of mind, personal development, and weight management to help women transform their lives from within. She is the award winning creator of mindoverplatter.com, a virtual wellness self help weight loss program. Welcome, Rosa. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Michelle. I'm really excited to have you here. And that is like you, you have so much training and so much background. So how did you get started with, with, where did you start and and where are you at now? (laughs) Yeah, sure. Okay. So uh, how I got started, frankly, is um, I love personal growth and personal development. So as a teenager, um, I was in a pretty dysfunctional household with a lot going on, a lot of negative messages, pretty, pretty traumatizing. And uh, I ended up having back surgery when I was 14. And I was in a body cast for the good part of that year because of the, the scoliosis. And I started reading um, the magic of thinking big and um, positive, the power of positive thinking and all the good ones, the greats, you know, Napoleon Hill and mm-hmm. all those wonderful books, psycho cybernetics, cyber cybernetics, <laughs> sorry, um, <laughs> remember the name of the book. Um, yeah. And that started me on a journey of personal growth for, that lasted my entire life. As I started having kids and I had a business, my hobby became personal growth and personal development. It helped me tremendously with my own, you know, demons, <laughs> with my own, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. what was going on in my life. I was able to release so much and mm-hmm. become the very much the person I want to become. And I realized that I want to take my hobby and turn it into my profession. So back in the 90s, I did just that. I started getting those certifications and I decided to just pivot and start my own coaching practice and help others the way I was helped. That, that's what awesome. got me in the hypnosis side of things. So um, let's talk more about what hypnosis means for you and how you do it and what, how, what you teach people. What, what does hypnosis look like with you? Yeah. So I believe all hypnosis is self-hypnosis. You know, I can't, I can't do something to you. You know, you, you're always in control of your mind. Hypnosis is merely um, a meditative state. It's like an alpha brain state or deeper. We slip in and out of alpha brain states all day long. And so it's comfortable, it's a trance. Trances are, you can have a wide-eyed trance where you're driving along and you you passed your exit and don't even know you did. Or, you know, when I'm driving to, whether I'm going to my daughter's or I'm going to where I used to work, if I get in the extreme left-hand lane, left-hand lane, yep, that's, I (laughs) I mean, (laughs) that's, go. I'll start going to work without realizing it. Even though I don't work Mm -hmm. there anymore, I haven't driven there in a year. (laughs) But if I'm over on the right-hand side, I'll go towards my daughter's house, which is, in another suburb. That's a trance. We slip in and out of trances all day long. It's when the critical part of your brain is relaxing and your subconscious mind is receptive to suggestions. It's where all habits and beliefs live. It's where our, you know, our habits live and information just stays there and you don't have to think about what you're doing. It's a very powerful place. And through hypnosis, we can reprogram some of those things. We can, that's how you make a change with your habits. You condition consciously to subconsciously repeatedly until it becomes automatic. And when it becomes automatic, it lives in the subconscious mind. And um, it's a really exciting 
thing to know and to understand because through hypnosis, we can communicate with the subconscious mind and we can ask it to change the program, to change some of those habits. So it's very, very effective. It's one of my favorite things to do. So I would imagine for like reprogramming and changing that, that thinking, then do you have like certain phrases that you would suggest people use or something like that? Or how, how do you reprogram? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So, I mean, we all know the power of I am. We all have heard about that. So I'm going to say if you're doing more of a self-hypnotic, self-hypnosis, <laughs> um, <laughs> You really want to start structuring I am statements in a positive frame. You want to notice what you say to yourself in a negative frame. Am I saying, um, why is this happening to me? Because you're just, that's just reinforcing itself. It aligns beautifully with the law of attraction because what we put out comes back. What you tell your mind gives it back to you. It's not Mm -hmm. judging. Subconscious mind operates from the age of a toddler. It doesn't judge. It just follows the program. So uh, personally, my approach is what we would call indirect language patterns. Now we're getting technical. Uh, Mm -hmm. Old school hypnosis is authoritative. Remember the old fashioned, you know, waving the watch, you Mm -hmm. are getting sleepy, you will do this. That's authoritative, it's direct commands. Um, I was trained in the the, um, theory under neuro-linguistics programming where Milton Erickson did a lot of indirect hypnotic language patterns, lots of metaphors, subconscious mind loves metaphors. So I'm going to say things to you like, I'm going to invite you to consider. Um, I'm just wondering if I'm curious. So it's, it's a softer approach. It works for my personality style. It works for the people that work with me, but there are many types of hypnosis. Actually, there's a lot of schools of thought. I'm not saying any are wrong. I'm just saying that yeah. you know, it's right for you. Mm-hmm. So I like, I like that. So it's a softer approach. I, I, um, that's very interesting. And, and so you were talking about the I am statement. So you don't use the I am statements as much or you do. You okay. Would. You do. Yeah. You would, you would okay. in the form of an affirmation, let's say, mm-hmm. uh, or when you're doing self hypnosis, you know, if okay. you're doing hypnosis and you're seeing yourself walking along, um, you know, like one I might do it. So when you're walking along the beach and you see the water and you're, you're in a healthy fit body and you say, well, I am, you know, I'm so energized right now. I feel so great. You know, I'm the healthiest I've been in my whole life. Those kind of statements would um, lend themselves well when under, you know, when, a, when a, in a trance state. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like that because that, that visualization would help reinforce that because a lot of times you're, you're, you're trying to like, you're repeating those kinds of statements, but having that, that kind of peaceful image then gives that feeling behind it too. And you could even like, you could smell things and, and, and that kind of state too. That's very, very interesting. I like that. Um, And then, so for, for the average person, how would you say, like how long or uh, what, what does that kind of program look like for, for kind of to get from one mindset to another, like say, because you deal a lot with weight management. So like changing into that thinking thin and, mm-hmm. and, and that from, from yeah. our negative habits. Um- yeah, chronic dieting, I say, is change your thinking from a chronic dieter to naturally thin. And mm-hmm. chronic mm-hmm. dieters have a way of operating. It's usually deprivation. It's I can't have this. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm punishing myself kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Life isn't, this isn't fair kind of thought. And we want to mm-hmm. switch over to naturally thin thinking, which is I choose not to have that. I know I won't feel good if I finish that. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's so easy when I, when you switch that kind of thinking, it's easier to pass on something, not because you're saying no and being de- you know, from a deprivation, but because you know it's not in your best interest. And mm-hmm. like, I don't smoke, I've never smoked. So if mm-hmm. someone had a cigarette in front of me and said, wow, this is the best cigarette I've ever smoked in my life. You don't know what you're missing out on here, try it. There, I can guarantee I'd bet a million dollars that I will, will never be in a state of mind where that 
looks appealing to me because it's just mm-hmm. not, it's like telling a vegetarian, this cheeseburger tastes fantastic. They're going to say, yeah. good for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So, um, so naturally thin thinking, we need to get there where we start to say, yeah, that, that, you know, brownie Sunday looks great, but mm-hmm. it's not for me right now. Maybe another day, maybe another time, but it's not for me. Mm-hmm. That's because their imagination is working on the side of the naturally thin thinker rather than the chronic dieter. And the part Mm -hmm. of the programming, this restructuring is slowly but surely taking each piece of our life and learning how to reprogram that. So it might be, it's contextual, right? So it could be every time you're, um, you know, at your mom's and she, uh, like I'll say, you know, we're Italian. So my mother has certain things that she makes that are irresistible. <laughs> you know, <there's> some <laughs> things she makes that you can pass on. <laughs> but, but for the most part, when you got a little Italian lady from Italy in your kitchen, most yeah. of what she makes is pretty darn good. Yeah. And so, yeah, so, so you have to like now under hypnosis, let's say during hypnosis, um, I might make the suggestion that you don't take seconds that you can mm-hmm. taste it and leave the rest. Mm-hmm. That maybe, you know, it could be different segments each time. Mm-hmm. Not that I meet with people one-on-one anymore. I do it all in, in through my virtual program. But mm-hmm. when mm-hmm. I have done it one-on-one, especially if you've got that much detail, okay, you're going to have a conversation with mom about using a sugar alternative or, you mm-hmm. know, using this gluten-free flour instead. <laughs> and mm-hmm. um, how did, you know, how did, problem solved that way. And in, in, in that setting, when you kind of reinforce it in the mind first, then when you have the conversation in real life, it's not that big of a deal. It's mm-hmm. actually, easy. or you've got the chips on the plate and I watch people with chips on their plate. Well, um, I don't get to have to dinner with people as much as anymore, but <laughs> during, a, yeah. during a pandemic, but yeah. my husband is, you know, he'll just go one chip after the other and he didn't want mm-hmm. the chips. Now mm-hmm. you could even buy someone not to eat chips. That's pretty easy. And you could do tapping around t- chips and there's a lot of things you can do to help eliminate the desire for chips. Mm-hmm. Let's talk a little bit about the tapping. We haven't talked about that yet. So yeah. What does tapping mean? What does that look like? Tapping is uh, really cool. It's tapping on meridian points, different, like, mm-hmm. you know, you might have a spot on like on your forehead or on your eyebrows or outside the brows. Mm-hmm. There's different meridians. We tap on those meridians. It restores balance to the energy system. And okay. it really helps reduce anxiety. It helps neutralize negativity mm-hmm. it used in a whole variety of ways. Mm-hmm. Um, now I'm just giving you a, you know, high level gloss over. Um, mm-hmm. It was created by Dr. Roger Callahan. I want to say in the eighties, maybe mm-hmm. Callahan discovered as a psychiatrist that uh, his phobic patients who were not getting better, you know, he tried this, meridian tapping process that he had learned somewhere with this famous, she, we don't know who Mary really is, but Mary was mm-hmm. afraid of water <laughs> and he did it with her. And she immediately, because nothing worked, she wasn't responding. And when he did the tapping sequence, the way he did it, she started becoming more comfortable with water. She wasn't afraid of water anymore. She was like his, he said, there's something here. So he studied it, developed something called the Callahan technique, which mm-hmm. evolved into thought field therapy, which mm-hmm. has been taught by a number of people in different modalities. So EFT, emotional freedom techniques, Dr. Mm-hmm. Gary, uh, Gary Craig, he, uh, Gary Craig was an engineer in Stanford and studied under Roger Callahan. He went to Stanford. He didn't, he didn't. I don't think he worked there. He was an engineer. Mm -hmm. I studied Mm -hmm. with, I did, I've learned both methods, thought field Mm -hmm. therapy and emotional freedom techniques. There's Mm -hmm. a tapping solution out that's big right now, the books, Uh, but they're all derived from the same thing. And it's tapping on meridians, which restore balance to the nervous, to this, the energy system, which often shift our mindset very quickly. So you can go from being very angry to just neutralized and uh, I like acupuncture acupressure in many ways it works mm-hmm. for cravings fantastic for cravings fantastic for negative beliefs for emotions I've used it for so many things throughout the years very cool yeah, so uh, one of the things I'm hearing from from all these different techniques is uh, one you need to be aware of what you're doing and what you're thinking about. And then 
when you are aware of it, then figuring out ways of countering it, of creating um, different responses in your brain to it mm-hmm. too, so that you don't automatically go for those chips or my wife is a, is a chip eater. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But she has made changes too, so that she only, instead of eating a whole bag of chips, she just takes a little container and just puts the, uh, like a portion of chips and that's her chip thing for each mm-hmm. day. She has her little, little container of chips. <laughs> that's the way to do it right mm-hmm. yeah yeah so it's taking those little those little steps to and building on that right yeah, yeah exactly and knowing knowing what's the purpose of the chips usually chips is just a habit Mm-hmm. But if there's an underlining reason, if we're using it as a way to comfort ourselves, which people do, right? People use mm-hmm. ice cream to comfort themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, well, then we, you know, then then it gets interesting with with all the modalities that I'm trained in, because now we're looking for secondary gain and what underlining what's going on under the surface. How do we re, redirect that? If it's mm-hmm. as simple as you put it in a container and you eat the one serving and you don't go back, you know, it's just an empty habit. Empty mm-hmm. habits, are, they respond like that. They're great. Mm-hmm. They can easily be moved. Mm-hmm. Mm, loaded habits that have something underlining, then those are going to give you a little more pushback. So it's kind of an example of a loaded habit. Loaded yeah. So, um, yeah, great. Uh, you know, ice cream is always a good one. So ice cream, um, well, actually, ice cream is always a good one. But I'll, I'll tell you one of mine. I write about it in my book. Mm-hmm. Was um, my... Uh, my stepson would uh, worked at a pizzeria. So only a few, every other weekend or something on the weekends, my stepson would come home. So I'd have my daughter, my son, my stepson, all the kids home at the same time. And that would not happen every day because we had a blended family. Mm-hmm. And he would bring home a pizza or a calzone. He knew I liked calzones. He'd bring home a calzone at night. So here it's 930 at night mm-hmm. and he's home with food. And the kids are like, yay, can we come downstairs? Can we come out of bed? Of course, your brother's home. Let's do it. And we get around the table and we'd be laughing and eating. And then, you know, time goes by and I want a calzone at 930 at night. And I'm like, I don't, I, that's not good for me because I, I was 30 mm-hmm. pounds heavier then. Mm-hmm. Um, and I realized it wasn't easy to give up the calzone because it, it filled the family gathering that desire to be with my family Mm -hmm. the the happy memories of the kids all at the same Mm -hmm. table and I had to like find now the habit could continue when the kids would come home but I started switching it off to something else like you know I'm not hungry tonight but bring the calzone for your dad I'll have Mm -hmm. some sugar-free jello (laughs) I'll have (laughs) I'll I'll drink some herbal tea because what I had to remind my subconscious mind is you want to be with the family the food mm-hmm. it just was the excuse to bring you together. And it's mm-hmm. lovely that it did, but you don't have to eat it. You could still be together. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That- yeah. Mm-hmm. And we often use food as a reward or a punishment. And so changing that mindset, like, mm-hmm. oh, we're going to celebrate this. So we're going to have a very nice dinner and we're going to have dessert or, you know, yeah. and, and then when we're punishing ourselves, we end, we're, either depriving ourselves or we're eating out of guilt and we're eating the sugary foods because we feel bad. And then that just is that whole vicious cycle. (laughs) Then you feel guilty for eating the bad and right. Well, in addition to that too, you're right. There's the guilty cycle and then we comfort Mm -hmm. again, but then Mm -hmm. we activated the sugar response and Mm -hmm. the cycle. And once that blood sugar spikes, Mm-hmm. You know, it's like you're on a sleigh ride now, you know, you've got mm-hmm. to hold on because you're, you're going fast and mm-hmm. you, it's hard to, to manage that once you kick it off. So I always try to remind people don't set it off because if you mm-hmm. set it off, then it gets harder. It's it's a very addictive pattern mm-hmm. once it's ignited. Mm-hmm. So what would you recommend people do to like, what's one thing people could start doing today to help with their mindset and help change the, that thinking? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I have something I call a power image and a power image is a visual, you know, something you can look at. 
And, uh, and if you couple it with a power phrase, it's really, really uh, empowering. Mm-hmm. So if you can find a photo of yourself mm-hmm. that you really like, or of someone that represents what you want to look like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it's not skinny, we're not talking skinny, we're talking healthy, what's healthy, healthy. for you, what, yeah. looks, what feels good to you. And if you can like behind, it's all on my vision board, but there's a there's an article that was written. Uh, I was in a newsletter, and it's it's I don't it's glued to the to the poster board, so I can't take it off. But it's a picture of me standing in front of a board, and I'm teaching, mm-hmm. and uh, it's probably 20 years old. But it was a really uh, it, it's a flattering picture of myself, maybe in the clothing that I was wearing. I was in a position where I was teaching, which it was always fun. Mm-hmm. And I, um, I used to have a phrase that said, I'm a talented and gifted trainer and coach, even before mm-hmm. I became a trainer and coach. Mm-hmm. And looking at a picture like that, seeing that sentence really reminded me that's where we're going. That's where we're going. That's who we are. Mm-hmm. That's who we are. With food, one of my favorite core choices that I tell people to make, and I ask my members to make this core choice every day is I have a healthy relationship with food. I have uh-huh. a healthy relationship with food, claim it, own it. And uh-huh. that was one of my best sentences I ever said to myself is if you in fact have a healthy relationship with food, because I'd say it over and over again, I have a healthy relationship with food. Okay. Uh-huh. If you do, what would you do right now? Uh-huh. All right. Right now, instead of eating three cookies, <laughs> uh-huh. I'm going to, uh, what, what do I really want here? You know, I, I already uh-huh. ate lunch. Am I really hungry? I'm not actually uh-huh. hungry. Let's do this. Let's go for a walk. We'll come mm-hmm. back. And if we're still hungry, let's mm-hmm. have some apples and peanut butter. Mm-hmm. And we get a sweet salt combo that way. And mm-hmm. not feel and get you're getting lots of fiber, you're managing your blood sugar, and you're not kicking up mm-hmm. this cookie craving thing. So mm-hmm. that's the healthy relationship with food phrase. I think that's one of the easiest things. An image, a phrase, repeat them over and over again. Tell your brain mm-hmm. this is who you are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like that. I have a healthy relationship with food. Yeah, that's, that's really great. And I like, I like the term relationship Mm -hmm. because it's, it's not just, uh, it's an ongoing thing and Mm -hmm. it, and relationships evolve and relationships change. And so you can change that relationship with your food. I, 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 that's a, that's a fantastic phrase. I really like that. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. It's been with me for decades. <laughs> yeah. And it's obviously helped you. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? I'm sorry. <laughs> it's obviously helped you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. So um, now if someone is, is they're, they're adapting and they're, and they're, they're developing those habits. And one of the things that comes up a lot of times though, is, is, something, some event, some, some trigger comes in that they haven't thought about, they haven't experienced Mm -hmm. or expected. So what do you do to help them um, deal with that and, and deal with it if they, if they like, quote unquote, fall off the wagon or whatever, whatever happens, they, they start feeling negative. How, how can they recover from, from that unexpected event? Yeah. Now this is, I have a process I, I put together called snap and tap. It's based on tapping, but it's a little bit more of a hybrid that I've blended some other modalities into. It's literally five minutes long. So, so one mm-hmm. thing, if we, hopefully they've learned snap and tap from me. Um, and if they have, then that's one thing. If something comes up, you're not expecting, we know a snap out of it, tap out of it, and you'll feel better really, really quickly, or at least neutralize, right? Neutral mm-hmm. is better than intense. Um, yes. If it's something where they, um, like if they have a power phrase and a power image in their mind, they can draw from that almost like, I like to think of it as the serenity prayer, right? Mm-hmm. When, you, when someone finds himself in a situation um, and they know they're in, um, you know, in a, it's used by addictive patterns, but it's used by everybody, the serenity prayer. It works for all of us. Mm-hmm. And to remember, yourself of something and repeat it can often help take you out of it. I do have a breathing technique that I teach people um, to help calm their minds and their bodies. It's very, very easy to condition. If you mm-hmm. condition that uh, when you don't need it, then when you mm-hmm. do need it, it's very effective. 
And then if we were uh, working together and they, you know, it happened and now they're like, I, you know, I need to work through this. We can, mm-hmm. we do, we'll do some processes around that. Um, anything from the, a neurolinguistics thing, hypnosis, tapping, mm-hmm. um, visualization mm-hmm. to kind of go back and, and reformulate that and you know, remove the sting from it and hopefully redirect the subconscious mind to do something else next time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. With it. And then, and then that experience then can be then added into their toolkit. Of, mm-hmm. Okay. So this is okay. So now I can handle this situation better if it happens again. Yeah. So th- that's what I teach a lot to you is, is awareness and prepping. So mm-hmm. making sure that like thinking about what could happen. And then when certain things happen, then you're, you're ready for it mm-hmm. and it's easier to deal with. Yeah. That's, those are some really great, great tips. Uh, uh, so I like the, the snap and tap. <laughs> we did that just before we started recording the podcast. I did a little snap. <laughs> get, yeah. get, get yourself into a different mindset. I like that. I've also yeah. seen a lot of, I've heard of a lot of people using like a bracelet of uh, changing to another risk to change a, their mindset about something, things like that. Yeah. Um, and that's called a pattern interrupt. Pattern you know, so when, interrupt. You, when you have like a, a band and you're like snapping it or you're moving it to the other, old school is the snap, <laughs> new school is <laughs> moving to the other side. Um, yeah. That's a pattern interrupt. And mm-hmm. what you're doing is you're, you're scratching the record. You're telling your brain, stop right there, stop. And it has to, for a moment, it can't do both things at once. Mm-hmm. So it literally interrupts it over and over and over again, so that we can implement the new thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what would you say um, would be the biggest stumbling block to getting started with, with the self-hypnosis and, and changing your mindset about things? For someone who, that's maybe, um, you mean just someone out there listening that says, I want to start the mm-hmm. self-hypnosis thing. Mm-hmm. Um, well, it's discipline. The discipline, discipline at night or in the morning or to put aside 15 minutes mm-hmm. to do it, to just do it. And then the other part that happens is if you really are putting yourself in a nice frame of mind, you're going to slip into a nice trancy state and forget to say what you want to say to yourself, right? So you're going to mm-hmm. see the image, you're going to say the phrase, you're going to see the image, you're going to say the phrase. And then when you go into that really nice lucid space, it's like you forget to do it because you're in a nice spot. So it's often easier to record something for yourself, maybe on your phone, hit record, okay. record something, um, see yourself doing something successfully, reminding yourself that you deserve it, and then just listening to it every day. Okay. So kind of like a guided meditation, but with your own voice. You could do that. Yeah, absolutely. That's interesting. That's interesting. I've used guided meditations before, but I've never thought of doing it with my creating my own guided meditation. That's kind yeah. Of, yeah, that's a neat idea. I like that. Uh, so, uh, with all of all, of, these are such great techniques in that. So, we've talked about um, having that power image and phrase. I like I like that because I'm I'm big on affirmations and also. I, I haven't really thought of combining them so much. Um, I've always had, you know, like I encourage people writing their book to to create a mock-up of their cover and, you know, and have that around so they see that. But I, I like that of the com- combining the two. That's a really great way of doing that. And the snap and tap and that discipline. So if someone is, is getting started with it, 15 minutes may feel like a long time. So do you have any kind of recommendation of, of building it up or how, how do you get to, to doing it on a regular basis? I think just starting even with two minutes a day is fine. I mean, if you spend, spend just two minutes focused on what you want, energetically something shifts. And so mm-hmm. I would, um, I would start with maybe just two minutes, listen, and maybe have some pre-recorded music. So, you know, how long two minutes is or five minutes, Mm -hmm. you have an app and um, just start um, as you're waking up and falling asleep, because that's a highly suggestible state, see the image and say the phrase and just Mm -hmm. let yourself, even as you fade in and out, it's okay. Still see the image, say the phrase and start Mm -hmm. with that. And then you can start to build it up. 
Yeah, that's great. And then, yeah, and then you can build on it and keep mm -hmm. going with it. That, that's, those are really great, great tips. So some of what we've talked about are um, turning those habits and making them positive habits that you, that become automatic and using the power image and phrase. Also noticing if we're thinking negatively, I, I often will say like what we think about is true. And mm -hmm. it, it, so if we're thinking negatively, that's, that's what we're going to get. That's what happens. Absolutely. And that softer approach with the self-hypnosis to, uh, and then uh, I, I, I really like that. I have a healthy relationship with food. That, that, that is a really great question or statement to say, okay, if I have a healthy relationship with food, is this really what I want? Mm -hmm. is, this, is this what I really need right now? Yes. Yeah. You know what? I, I'm a fan of affirmations. One of my friends, I always say to her, remember money's abundant in your life. Money's always abundant in your life. Mm -hmm. And she called me this week to say, you'll never guess what happened. I just got this great opportunity. It's, it means this much money. It means this much that she goes. And I've been saying that money's abundant in my life for like a year now, but I'm swear it's like the first thing I thought of when these good things happen to me is, wow, look at money's abundant in my life. And I'm like, mm -hmm. it does stick at some point and you have a surprise. Mm -hmm. It shows up. Yeah. And that can be part of the struggle too, is as we're, we're saying those things and repeating it, it's not an immediate result. It's mm -hmm. not, it's not like money just shows up at your door the next day or you're instantly thin. It takes, it takes time and it takes, I mean, it's taken years to develop those negative habits. So it's going to take some time to, to yeah. replace those and, and change that pattern. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right. We have to always remember that we didn't, our identity, your subconscious mind will do whatever it can to stay in harmony with your identity. So it knows what your identity is. It's your core image. Mm -hmm. And it's not about to let it go mm -hmm. uh, without some serious um, reassurance that mm -hmm. you're not changing, you know, you're not getting rid of parts of yourself. You really are, everything that's there to protect you is not going to put you at harm's way. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a process. I do believe that. Absolutely. Everybody wants the quick fix. And even though hypnosis is faster than maybe traditional type approaches, it's still a process. Everything's a process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that, and like you talked about that discipline, so that having that consistency and building it up, then that just, it's just like working out. It's that building that muscle and, and, and making that happen on a more regular basis to, to get it tuned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This has been really helpful for Rosa. I'm so glad that you were able to come on today. So how do, how do people get in touch with you? Sure. Well, you can actually go to my website, mindoverplatter.com. I have a contact me page right on there. It goes right into my inbox. So people can Perfect. feel free to contact me that way. Um, I'm on Facebook as well. I have a virtual group on Facebook, virtual coach Rosa, healthy mind, healthy body. People are mm -hmm. welcome to join there. Um, I mean, we I have an email as well. Coach Rosa at iCloud dot com so um, i'm i'm accessible <laughs> awesome thank you so much for for coming on today thank you so much for listening to the you can do it Too podcast if you feel inspired or gain some insights then please subscribe if you're already subscribing please rate and review it i'd really appreciate it if you want to get some more information about me and what i have to offer go to my website stepsteppick.com Thanks for listening and I hope to see you next time.